right where we left off from last week and go into the four growth stages. So let's start by going over what these different growth phases are. The three most commonly known stages of hair growth are the antigen or active growth stage, the catagen or transitional retreat stage, the telogen or rest stage, and the exogen or shedding stage. Let's take a closer look at what's going on during each growth stage by starting with the antigen stage or better known as the active growth stage, which is obviously the most popular stage. In this stage, as I previously explained, rapid cell division is taking place in the hair metric. New hair is being created every day, hour, minute, and second. An average of 0.3 to 0.4 millimeters a day. I know this may seem like a bit, but for the human body, this renewal process is phenomenal. The antigen growth stage lasts for about two to three years, and for some even up to six years. Many people think that African Americans have a significantly lower growth rate, but that's not necessarily true, or at least based off of genetics. Let me briefly explain. Kinky hair has a higher breakage rate and appears a lot shorter than straight hair. But if you're knowledgeable and active about properly caring for your hair, even if you do have a slower antigen growth rate, over time it may not be as significant as you think. Now let's move on. After the two to six years in the antigen growth stage, the hair strand goes into the catagen stage, or what I like to call the active transitional stage. During this one to two week long renewal process, a signal is sent from the body, then the hair metric shrinks. Pigmentation ends, hence why a shed hair strand has a clearish white area on the end. And the dermal papilla detaches, cutting your hair strand off of its nourishing blood supply. The whole area disappears, and your hair strand becomes what is known as a clubbed hair. At this stage, even the part of hair that is in your scalp is now dead, but is still tightly lodged into your scalp. So after the catagen active transitional stage, your hair goes into the telogen or rest phase. Your clubbed hair strand remains dormant for one to four months. Somewhere within that time, underneath the dead hair strand, life is starting to form. An antigen stage is beginning all over again. The new baby hair strand feeds from the same dermal papilla, and if the old, dead, clubbed hair strand has not yet shed, the new baby hair growing underneath will sneak up behind it or beside it. In fact, frequent exercising speeds up blood circulation, which speeds up cell division, which in turn speeds up hair growth, which will result in longer, thicker hair. The final and less known stage is called the exogen or shedding stage. 1% of the hair strands that are in the telogen or rest stage are in the exogen stage. Before your hair strand enters the exogen stage, it's firmly anchored within the follicle. During the exogen stage, the resting clubbed hair is released, and a simple comb or brushing of the hair will cause it to shed. See, everything in your body works like a well-organized orchestra. It's constantly renewing and destroying itself. This is in large part of your body trying to avoid infestation and disease. So your mindset really shouldn't be to seek out ways to stop the transitioning, rest, and shedding stages and just staying in the growth stage. It should be perhaps to extend the growth stage or make it as active as possible. But I'll talk about that in a later video within the series. Many of us have the impression that hair grows evenly and goes through each phase at the same time. So you trim your ends straight across and are disappointed a few months later when your ends are uneven again. Then you proceed to blame it on split ends. Here's an example of what it will look like if this myth were true. All the hair follicles you have will go into the antigen stage at the same time. After the antigen stage, they would all enter the catagen stage followed by the telogen rest stage, then eventually enter the exogen shed stage and shed all at the same time. Now that you know what this looks like, you clearly know that this scenario was obviously not true. In reality, your hair follicles actually act independently from each other. Not only are different hair strands throughout your scalp in different growth cycles, but your hair can grow at different rates at various places on your head. In fact, generally speaking, hair grows faster in the crown vertex area and slowest in the temple area. 
Here's a more realistic example of the growth behavior of hair. 80 to 85% of hair on our head is in the antigen active growth stage. So being that on average, we have 100,000 follicles on our scalp. That's 80 to 85,000 hair strands that are in the antigen active growth phase. At different times between two to three years, these hair strands start to go into the catagen transitional phase. So on average, 2% 2 or 2,000 hair strands are in a short two to three week long catagen stage. Remember, while the first cycle is going on, the other 15 to 20% of your hair strands are constantly starting a new cycle and are now somewhere between the antigen active growth stage or the catagen transitional stage. And once a strand is in the telogen rest stage, which is about 10 to 15,000 strands of your hair at any given time, it will remain that way for several months. Only 1% of the 10,000 hair strands in the rest stage go into the exogen shedding stage at a time. Hence why you hear all the time that it's normal to shed about 100 to 150 hair strands a day. In essence, with each growth cycle starting and ending at different times, you end up with a head full of hair strands at different stages of each growth cycle at any given time. Well, for starters, you don't have to be so hard on yourself. You're not only given a second chance when you mess up during your hair journey, you're given a third, fourth, fifth chance and so on to get it right. So if you mess up somehow and length is part of your goal, you don't have to necessarily chop off your hair and start from scratch. Rather, gradually recuperate, take it as a learning opportunity, and improve on your methods, perhaps by watching green beauty videos. Now that we have a better understanding of the structure and the growth stages of our hair, Let's move on to the good stuff next week where I'm going to be covering the scientifically proven hormonal and seasonal connection to hair growth. See you in the next video! Don't forget to enter the Green Beauty Products Big Christmas Giveaway taking place right now. To enter, simply follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Simple as that. Click the box on the left for instructions on how to enter and all the great prizes.